Um, I just wanted to introduce in this video um, one of the methodologies I'm using for ARC. I actually have about three of them, but this one uh, seems to be working out the best. Um, so I'm building a scene out of the input and the output objects and from the input and the output grid. For this one, there's three objects and they are gray and they have certain blah, 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 blah uh, properties, same with the output. Okay, so what this program, what my program does is it determines what rules would transfer the input scene to the output scene. In this case, uh, whatever that is, it's just going to turn something red or turn something blue. As you can see, it turns it red or blue. How does it decide if it's red or blue? Well, if we look at the properties of the objects, it seems like objects that are sick, that have six elements are pointed red and the rest are blue. Okay, that is obviously what's happening. So, it, so what my program does is I didn't tell it this, it just decides that. Ah, and what it did was it decided objects that have six elements are going to be painted, repainted red and objects that are blue are going to be repainted uh, blue. I mean, objects that are uh, not, this is negation. Um, and that, it figured that out. It took it about two and a half seconds, three seconds to figure that out. Let's let's do it another one. Okay, here we have another repaint. Uh, it looks like in this case, objects that have two pixels are green, objects that have four are blue, three are red. Okay, let's see if it can deduce that. And it does. Okay, so it says uh, things with a mass of three get painted red. Anyway, it does this, and it takes it about two or three seconds to do that. And uh, this works with several uh, things. Oh, actually, uh, it doesn't just work with repainting. It works with any sort of property change. Like, okay, here's a situation where, based on the shape, it's going to be located in a new place on the grid. So let's see how long it takes it to learn this one. Um, okay, it solved it pretty instantly. It said that if I reposition an object to a different location based on what would be normalization translation to normalize it, so, for example, to normalize that if we're going to drop this object from the sky and have it land, uh, this object would rotate not at all. This one would rotate 270 degrees. This one would rotate 180, etc. So what it does is it tries to put the most weight to the bottom right. And so once it's done that and normalizes these guys, uh, it comes up with the amount of rotation it would take to normalize them. It says uh, 180. There's a 270, like you saw. Um, and once it, as it's normalizing these guys, so it it gives them sort of an identity. And so, in this case, by looking at all the previous examples, or et cetera, and so that's how it's able to solve this one. Uh, it doesn't use any sort of search. Uh, I used to do a uh, logical operation that was discovered in the, I don't know, 1500s or whatever. And, okay, yeah, here's another example. Here's a colorization where this is not the cardinality. This is something else. So what is what is... The solution to this one we just ask a few seconds later it should say ah the solution to this is oh oh by the way it also finds whatever solution works it's not actually the proper true solution but it's one that a human would guess let's say so it said well i had to it, the bigger objects are going to be red i'm sorry the bigger objects are blue smaller objects are red evidently that's what worked here um it should have been the pair um, like, if I would have guessed this one, I would have probably said, oh, two objects that are alike are going to be blue, and then the unlike object's going to be red. Um, it figured out a different one. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. Uh, but it's still not this one correct. Uh, in a situation like pay, uh, playing the uh, Real Art Challenge, I can also allow it to try out both of those. Uh, here's a, where it doesn't objectify correctly, but it still gets, I think, the correct answer. Yeah, it does. So it says... If I have a pen that's colored green, I can replace it with yellow. And that does the... Uh, so, oh, why I wanted to show you this one specifically is that the... It comes out with... Let me see if I got this right here. Yeah, it comes out with only a specific number of rules. This is because it smashes together all the discoveries that it finds. Yeah, so, like, here are some of the discoveries it makes. Um... I can maybe go into the discovery routine in a different video. Uh, I'm just I'm not sure how much of this I, I can publicize or explain because right now everyone thinks this is an amazing test of AI. Um, so maybe I don't want to give away the magic yet, and I sound so nonchalant about how easy it is. And there was no there was no algorithms out there that would do what an AI should do here. So I just wrote one. 
Uh, yeah, I'm 50 years old, so I've been doing this a while. I don't care about how to transfer the input to the output. I don't care about deleting blue things. Uh, I don't care about noise. I don't care about classification of noise. All I care about is what program would make an out with this output. What program would make this output? And then, of course, uh, then I care about what came in on the input that would show me how to derive this program. And the same is true for this. So the blue dots never get put into the into the program at all. All I care about is where do I draw squares? The name of this is so. So in other words, where do I draw squares? Well, it looks like the input told me whenever I find a, a mostly red box, I find the top and bottom corner, and that's where I draw my red square. So I just objectify the output, objectify the input, and I find out what input is relevant uh, uh, to the output. And same with here, and so that's, okay, that description is how the program works. 